In this video, we're going to look at the relationship between the line current, the current going the transmission line from the source to the load, and the phase currents, the currents going through each of the individual impedances in each of the individual phases. As we pointed out before, in a delta connected load, or a delta connection, the line voltage, the voltage between two transmission lines, is applied across the phase itself so that the phase voltage and the line voltage are the same. On the other hand, the line current coming in to this A node consists of, or there are, there are three currents here associated with this node. You've got I sub little a big A here. You have I sub capital A B going here. That's meant to be the current going from the A node to the B node through the impedance here. You have I sub B C going from the B node to the C node. That's the phase current going through this phase winding. And you have I sub C A, which is the current going from the C node to the A node going through this winding. And as we mentioned before, the combination or the set I sub big A big B, I sub big B big C, and I sub big C big A, those three currents constitute a balanced set. And what we want to do now is determine the relationship between the line current and the phase currents in each of these different phases. To do that, we're going to write a KCL equation here at the A node. We have coming in I sub little a big A. So that would be a negative I sub little a big A. You have I sub a b leaving, so that would be plus I sub a b. And then coming into this node, we have I sub c a, which would be a minus I sub c a equal, the sum of those three things must equal zero. Now our intention again is to determine the line current in terms of these phase currents. So here's the line current. Those two are phase currents. Let's solve for the line current, which then is I sub little a big A, bringing it to the other side and flipping around, is then equal to I sub a b minus I sub c a. Once again, let's look at the phasor diagram to understand what is happening with these currents. So here is I sub A B. Here is I sub B C that lags I sub A B by 120 degrees. And here's I sub C A, which is leading I sub A B by 120 degrees. And we have here I sub A B, that's this current right there, minus I sub C A. Well, I sub C A is that current. Minus means to flip it 180 degrees and then tip to tail it. So here's I sub AB plus the opposite of I sub CA. And the resultant vector, vector or the resultant phasor is the line current I sub little a big A. Once again, it's a simple little trig calculation to demonstrate that the length of this phasor here, or the magnitude of the line current, is square root of three times as big as the phase currents associated with that node. And this time, the phase angle of the line current will be lagging the phase angle, the corresponding phase angle of the phase current by 120, I'm sorry, by 30 degrees. In other words, the line current is square root of three times as big as the Magnitude, the magnitude of the line current is square root of three times as big as the magnitude of the phase current. And the phase angle of the line current is 30 degrees behind. Let, let me say that again. The phase angle of the line current is 30 degrees less than the phase angle of the corresponding phase current. Looking back up here then, it's fairly intuitive that these two currents combining are going to be greater than the line current itself. Or no, I said that wrong. The line current is going to be bigger than either of these phase, phase currents by themselves. 
because they've, they're combining at this point, and the way that they combine, the trig behind it makes it, or shows us, that this line current here is square root of three times as big as either one of those phase currents.